Hi everybody, the quantity theory of money is a theory that links growth rates in the money supply to growth rates in prices, i.e. inflation. It's a theory that's been around for many, many years, hundreds of years, going back to the 16th century, can you believe? But it's a theory that's been reinvigorated in the 20th century by economists like Irving Fisher, but most notably monetarists like Milton Friedman who said that inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon. So, for monetarists, this is the reason why there is inflation, the primary cause of inflation. And that is because it, it's a theory that links the money supply to inflation, a direct link between the two. So, monetarists say this is the only reason why there is inflation in the economy. They will use the Fisher equation as the premise to explain this link between the money supply and inflation, we need to build to this Fisher equation where MV equals PQ. Let's do so by first understanding the different variables in this equation. M is the money supply, okay? So for example, M4, as we learned in my previous video. V is the velocity of circulation. That is the number of times that money changes hands in the economy. Think of it as the number of transactions that take place with a given amount of money. So let's take a £10 note. Let's say you've got a £10 note. You spend that £10, that generates income for somebody else. They then spend it, that generates income for somebody else. They then spend it, etc, etc. So the number of times that £10 is spent in the economy is V, the velocity of circulation. So the proper definition, the number of times a given amount of money is changing hands in an economy in a year. That's the velocity of circulation. Um, P is the average price level. Okay, So the average prices of final goods and services in the economy. That's basically going to be our inflation rate. And Q is the quantity of final goods and services sold in the economy, i.e. real GDP, right? So that's what Q is. That then takes us to this crucial, crucial identity, which is the Fisher equation. Now, by definition, MV must equal PQ. Let's understand. The left side of the equation, guys, is the expenditure side of the equation, the consumption side of the equation, where you've got the total amount of money circulating in the economy, i.e. the money supply, multiplied by the number of times that we're using it, the number of transactions taking place with that money supply. That gives us the total amount of spending taking place in the economy, right? That is the expenditure method to get GDP. That is nominal GDP right there, the expenditure method. So that is what we are buying in the economy with the amount of money that's out there. On the right-hand side, we have the value of what's sold in the economy. So the final quantity of goods and services in the economy, that's real GDP, multiplied by the price of them. So the price of them is current prices, okay? So if we take the quantity of goods and services sold in the economy, multiplied by their current prices, we get nominal GDP as well. This is the output method of calculating GDP. By definition, clearly, what is sold must have been bought by somebody. What is bought by people must have been sold by producers. The two clearly have to be equal to each other, and that's the point. It's an identity, guys. It's an identity. No one is questioning that identity. But that is the premise of the link between the money supply and inflation. Let's understand why by going to this equation here. So if we want to use the Fisher equation to isolate the impact on prices, let's change the equation to isolate prices. So I just rearrange the equation to get this. P equals MV divided by Q, and that tells you that there are three variables that could influence average prices in the economy, i.e. inflation. You've got the money supply, you've got the velocity of circulation, and you've got the quantity of final goods and services sold, i.e. real GDP. What monetarists say is that no, it's not three variables that can influence prices. It's only the money supply because V and Q are fixed, and they prove this by looking at data over time. And they say that, look, you know, take the velocity of circulation. Yes, V can change. So in a recession, for example, there might be less transactions taking place with the same amount of money. All right, so V can decrease in a recession. In a boom, V can increase. But they argue that V will not increase or decrease by enough to influence prices in the economy, the average price level in the economy, i.e. inflation. They say something similar about Q, which is real GDP. They say, look, if you look over time, Real GDP is relatively constant, it doesn't change hugely. Look at the UK for example, you know, since the 1970s, so let's go back just 50 years as, a, as an example here. Real GDP in the UK has always been around 2.5%, 2 to 2.5%. That's our trend rate of growth over a long, long period of time. Yes, there are deviations when we have recessions and booms, absolutely. 
But again, monetarists will argue that real GDP does not deviate by enough to have the influence of prices that we've seen. They will have data to back that up. So what they say, if we go back to our Fisher equation, is that V is fixed and Q is fixed. They don't change by enough to have an influence on prices based on the data that they've used. That leads us to one very, very simple conclusion. That it's not V and Q that can influence prices, it's only M. So if we take V and Q out, look what's left. The change in prices can only be influenced by changes in the money supply. So if there is an increase in the growth rate of the money supply, monetarists will say, by definition, there will be an increase in inflation given a lag time, they will say. But that is the primary cause of inflation right there. Only changes in the money supply can lead to changes in the inflation rate. So you guys learn this as an alternate view of looking at causes of inflation. It's hotly debated though. Keynesians are the ones that will debate it very, very heavily. And they say, whoa, monetarists, just whoa, take a chill pill and relax for one second. This assumption that V and Q is fixed is ludicrous, especially the idea of V. How on earth is V fixed? They say. And they say, look, for example, in a recession, there is no way that V is fixed. V can decrease significantly in a recession. There is no way you can argue that it's fixed. And as a result, there might not be this direct link between the money supply and inflation. Here's an example for you. So let's say, look, in a recession, the money supply can increase so much, but there might be a liquidity trap where that increase in the money supply is not filtering through to the rest of the economy. It's being hoarded, maybe by banks, for example. They're not lending it out. And that is going to reduce significantly the quantity of transactions taking place, i.e. the velocity of circulation, the number of transactions taking place, will drop significantly, whereby that increase in the money supply is not going to feed through to an increase in the inflation rate. So Keynesians will say in a recession this theory doesn't hold at all, where big increases in the money supply do not feed through to higher inflation rates. That's the debate, and that's why this has not come through to the mainstream, whereby this is the accepted theory of inflation, because there are still hot debates about it, lots of controversy about it. If you guys go on and study economics at university, you can maybe uh, research this in more detail and see for yourself if this is the primary cause of inflation. But you guys learn it as an alternate view. Remember, this is an identity. So if ever you need to make calculations using the quantity theory of money, just always make sure that the left side of the equation equals the right side. But now you've got a deeper understanding of why monetarists will say like Milton Friedman, that inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon. There is hot debate about it as well. Very interesting stuff. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you all in the next video.